So this morning we woke up to text messages and we also woke up to notifications. I got both. President Clovenel Mois, I hope I pronounced his name Mois. right, Mois. Clovenel Mois of Haiti was assassinated in an early attack early this morning at his home on the outskirts of Port-au-Prince. Mois's wife, Martine, was also shot in the attack. There is conflicting news of whether she is alive or she has passed as well. The interim prime minister, Claude Joseph, told the New York Times that he is now in charge. It is unclear how much control he actually has. A new prime minister was scheduled to replace Joseph this week. And the head of the nation's highest court, Judge Rene Silvestre, who may have helped establish some order, he died of COVID just a few weeks ago. Now, in a televised broadcast to the nation, Joseph presented himself as the head of the government, announced that he and his fellow ministers had declared a state of siege, called for calm. The news of Moise's assassination rocked the Caribbean nation. It's been in turmoil for years and years, decades and decades. In recent months, protesters demanded Moise's removal. He has clung to power, ruling by decree for more than a year. Now armed gangs control many of the streets. They've taken to kidnapping school children, church pastors in the middle of services, poverty and hunger on the rise, basic government services are sometimes non-existent. The political value left by Moise's killing could fuel another cycle of violence. Yeah. Now this has been going on since Haiti got independence from France in the early 1800s. They threw out France, brought an end to one of the world's most brutal slave colonies eventually defeating Napoleon's forces in 1803. But the suffering of the Haitians have been for centuries and decades and decades. More recently, Francois Duvalier, known as Papa Doc, and then his son Jean-Claude, known as Baby Doc, ran the country. In 1990, a priest from a poor area, Jean Bertrand Aristide, became the first democratically elected president, but he was overthrown in a coup in less than a year. It's just been one disaster after another. Yeah. Hurricanes, eventually, uh, uh, thank yeah. God at least for the people, the Haitians were in the United States that President Biden and Alejandro Mayorkas designated Haiti for another 18 months of TPS. I don't know how anyone could go back there at this moment, how they could have even went back two months ago, but certainly not now. Yeah. As Mayorkas said at the time, this was before the assassination of the prime minister, Haiti has currently experienced serious security concerns, social unrest, an increase in human rights abuses, crippling poverty, and the lack of basic resources. And this was before the assassination of the current president. Okay. We don't know. We don't even know who did it. We don't know who did it. We don't know. There's a lot of suspects. Yeah, what, why it happened. I just, you know, I Well, we know to... why it happened. Somebody wanted to wrest power from him. Right, right. Okay, it's just... Now, is it the current new president who claimed, is it him? Was it his people? Well, that's, that's what, was it yeah. others? Nobody knows yet. Nobody knows, but I was talking to my best friend because mm -hmm. he's Haitian uh -huh. and, you know, I wanted to know more about it because I don't know about, you know, right. the president, the stance, because I know about foreign countries and government and how, you know, it can be good or bad with how they are with the people and he was like it's a lot of talk going on they don't know if it's gangsters they don't know if it was an inside job they're just trying to find out but at the end of the day we just you know we're praying for that country because this it, it's it's gonna hurt you know now you got people out there thinking that they can run stuff well it's sad because you know haiti does get billions and billions of dollars in financial aid internationally but apparently it's not getting to the people. It, that's the problem. It's not getting to the people. I don't know what the answer is. Show they don't They don't have the, the basic infrastructure to even get foreign aid to people. So when governments say they're gonna give money to Haiti and it doesn't get to people and people are lining their pockets, it's a huge problem. Yeah. And I, I don't know what the answer is. Yeah. I don't know what the answer is. I, I hope it doesn't come to a point where foreign powers like the United States or France, the United States and France have the most interest in Haiti, France being the colonial power that ruled it and uh, the United States being the uh, power that is closest to Haiti. I hope neither one of those takes matters into their own hands and decides to go into at least 
be a good person or a good guy and try to put order because that usually turns into bigger disasters. Right, I agree. We'll be checking on that. Yes. And our hearts go out to everybody in Haiti who has to be suffering. Meanwhile, Eric Adams. Wins. He was my guy. Yes. Yeah, I voted for him. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud to awesome. say it. Yeah, Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams won the Democratic primary. For mayor of New York City, Adams appealed to the political center and he promised to strike the right balance between fighting crime and ending racial injustice in policing. He himself is a former police captain. He triumphed over a large Democratic field in New York's first mayor race to use ranked choice voting. Nobody understood what this ranked choice voting was. Mm -hmm. I personally think they make ranked choice voting to say we're going to make it more Democratic. Mm. To me, what ranked choice voting, what it ended up being was the Democratic machine choosing who their candidate was ultimately uh, going to be. That's my opinion. You know, people will argue with me. But to me, there would be no reason to do it other than another reason for the machine to pick their candidate. Mm, mm. I mean, I'm happy my candidate won, right. but still. But that's what you think's going on. That's what I think yeah. is going on. <laughs> now, Adam's closest Democratic rivals included uh, Catherine Garcia. She was the former sanitation department she would have been the first woman woman mayor of new york city had she wow. won she lost by less than one percentage of a point wow. by eight thousand four hundred and twenty six votes he is now going up against curtis sliwa the founder of the guardian angels to be mayor because curtis sliwa is going to be representing the republican, republican ticket democrats outweigh republicans seven to one in new york city I don't think it's going to be much of a race. Say, yeah. <laughs> I either. don't think it's going to be much of a race. Interestingly, Andrew Yang, who ran a very promising presidential uh, race, he did not show very well for the New York City uh, mayoral race. He was the one candidate known for the universal basic income that everybody should get some money. Everybody needs an income, whether you work or you don't work. Mm. Um, but apparently that was not the overriding concern for local politics. Right. The overriding concern for local politics was police and security and racial profiling and some combination of how we put police reform, racial profiling and mm. security, how we kind of mix it all in a bowl so that we get all three. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's a magic formula for mixing that all in a bowl, but I personally, because that was, that was my issue, all three, I said, we got to mix all three and figure it out. Right. And I looked at all the candidates and of all of them, Eric Adams. I thought Eric Adams would be the most qualified to figure it out given, mm -hmm. given, given you know, his background and the fact that he's a former police officer. Right. So I hope I, I hope I voted well. It's hard yeah. to tell. Yeah. You never know. You never I hope know I hope I voted well. Things, yeah. What did you what did you think? Um I actually, you know, uh, Eric Adams, you know, I liked a lot of what mm -hmm. he had uh, to say. Uh, I did see how he wasn't he was opposed to defunding the police. Correct. You know? Um and that's kind of what we had I, said I'm as opposed well. to defunding know, police. But, and and that's right. why we didn't like the word defund. I don't like to defund police. You know? Right. So and you know, the fact that he I, I feel like he understands, you know, of course he's still gonna want the better for Black Lives Matter because he, you know, endured uh, police brutality when he was young as well. That's right. You know, he was a beat by officers. So um I just you know, I I, I saw it for him i, I yeah. voted for him because i thought he spoke well he seems like a really intelligent guy mm -hmm. and i said he's the one guy who experienced it from both sides exactly he exactly. was a police officer mm -hmm. but he also lived lived exactly. as a black man exactly. before the police and and saw what it was like the racial profiling and, yeah, and living I, as a black yeah, man in new york city i connect so with that. so i thought of everybody mm -hmm. he understood the problem the most exactly and that to me and that in most voters minds was the overriding was the overriding factor of who to vote for exactly and that's why he won all right we'll see what happens i hope for the best same here all right coronavirus 33 million confirmed coronavirus cases more than 606,000 deaths worldwide there's been more than 184 million cases 
I think we have to get to 3 billion <laughs> to 4 billion cases. We're about 2.9 billion cases away from getting rid of the pandemic, unfortunately. Mm. Surging COVID cases in Tokyo have hit a two month high. Almost guarantees that the Japanese government is going to declare a new state of emergency next week. And it's going to continue that state of emergency through the entire Tokyo Olympics. The pandemic has delayed the opening. Olympics is now going to start on July 23rd and end on August 8th. It was supposed to be last year, actually. Right, right. So it's actually delayed it by more than a year. A new state of emergency could even lead to a ban on local fans going to the events. Separately, a government COVID-19 advisory panel met Wednesday and expressed concerns about the ongoing resurgence of the infections. Tokyo reported 920 new cases on Wednesday. It is the highest total since 1,010 were reported on May 13th. The Olympics is pushing ahead despite all of this bad news, partially because the postponement of 15 months stalled the Olympic income. Of it gets course. almost 75% of its income from broadcast rights and estimates it would have lost three to $4 billion if they continued to cancel the Olympics. Mm. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said today that the Delta variant has become the most prominent variant circulating in the United States, representing 51% of all new cases. Wow. It was first identified in India. It is blamed for a surge of cases in countries around the globe. Parts of Europe have reinstated travel quarantines. The Delta appears to be far more infectious than other strains. I wonder if Delta Airlines is going to have the same problem that Corona, <laughs> corona beer, beer had. <laughs> you know, when, right. when people, when Corona first came out, I was like, I don't want to buy no right. Corona Everybody beer. Was like, why no would I, corona beer. Why would I buy Corona beer? I don't want to drink Corona. <laughs> and now people are like, I don't want to go on no airline with the Delta variant. Yeah. You I think that's going to happen or no? I don't think now? it will. No. I think people are over that already, yeah, right? Yeah. I think so, too. I was making a joke. <laughs> All right. Let's get into hump day. It's hump day. The Cavils are ready. The Ringo Starr. Let's see what's going on. The Beatles drummer Ringo Starr is pulled out of a legal battle with the makers of a popular sex toy <laughs> called the Ringo. <laughs> <laughs> the music legend, oh uh, 80 years old, argued that his reputation is at stake. If the Ringo sex toy name was registered as a trademark. Okay, before you keep on reading, can we look at the Ringo? What is the Ringo? Can we look at that real quick? What is it? Is this a male or a female? So is that's it... what I wanted to ask you. If you had to guess. It looks like a male. So what does that do? The Ringo looks like the Ringo looks like you would put it, you would put it, you would you would you you would, you wouldn't put it on your finger, that's for sure. But it would act as a ring, but it's not going on your finger. Right. It would go somewhere else, right? And, it, and that little thing thing. And that on little the thing thing is was going to start vibrating you go. and you got you got the drummer of the Beatles <laughs> vibrating on your ting ting he's so violated. he's a little upset about this he's, I guess he's right violated. he feels violated, he feels I feel violated talking about it <laughs> so the company Pacific Coast Holdings pledged to avoid any reference to innuendo to Ringo the Beatle they're just calling it Ringo the battle erupted in 2019 when Ringo's lawyers said moves by the firm to trademark the name would make consumers think his newest venture is sex toys. <laughs> in related news, the Hasbro company is starting a lawsuit against Jonathan Elias uh, for trademark of the <laughs> yo-yo name. They're saying they don't want any Jonathan Elias taking over. The yo yo, that's not true. That is not. <laughs> no, that is not true. Ringo should have just got in the business because that's the best way to make money. Yeah, I mean, if he put his face on the vibrator. That's what I, I'm saying. I'm going to tell you something. I think a lot of people would love to, to be vibrated by Ringo by Star. Ringo Star. Right? Please. Yeah. Come on, man. You haven't sold gotta enough think, records. Gotta you think smart. Yeah, right. He hasn't sold enough. He hasn't sold anything in years. Right? And, and doesn't Michael Jackson own the Beatles catalog <laughs> or something like that? I uh, think something like that. Uh, Ringo, you should have did something smart and just put your name on it, put your face on the thing and just been like, hey, let's rock. Now, the company, their defense is, all right? It's a ring and it's a O. Okay, their, their defense <laughs> is, their defense is that Ringo is a trademark squatter and he said Ringo is 80 years old and their customers are a lot younger and way too young to make any connection to this aging beetle. 
I think um, they really insulted him. Yeah, I think Hugh Hefner would have said something different. I think they that. really <laughs> insulted him. Meanwhile, villagers in a small British town complained about screaming and moaning noises <laughs> coming from the Swingers Festival over the weekend. That's surprising that you would have screaming and moaning noises coming oh. from the Swingers Festival. Wow. I think they should have been aware of that before they gave the permit to have the Swingers right. Festival in their little town. What do you think was going to happen, right, right? Right. Neighbors who live near the fields where the four-day Swingathon event took place said their peace was shattered by the wails and groans of people having sex 24 hours a day. <laughs> Organizers of the X-rated event advertised wet t-shirt competitions, a mobile dungeon and fetish demonstration, plus a Mr. and Mrs. Swingathon contest. <laughs> Our on-the-spot reporter, Jonathan Yo-Yo Elias, <laughs> will be reporting there later in the week, mm -hmm. and we will be featuring that. No, we will not. We will not. I have one. The tickets were sold for reported 200 pounds per couple. Is it 200 pounds? You have to be a couple to show up. You uh -huh. just can't show up as a single. Well, that's what a swinger is. Yes, you the have to festival. Be a yeah, but yeah, you can't. You just can't show up for sex. You got to come up with your, with your, with your your significant other i wonder if uh remember that guy that uh was dating his little sex doll yes i wonder if he could come there <laughs> with his <laughs> i don't know I mean, they're a couple they're married i actually. don't know i don't know now <laughs> unconformed reports have suggested that limited coronavirus guidelines were in place at the festival i can't imagine anyone's really concerned i, I would say if you're going to the swingers festival <laughs> The least of your concerns is coronavirus. <laughs> would that would would that be your number one concern? At a swingers. At a swingers, would yeah. that be, that would coronavirus would be your number one concern? Um, or, yeah. or perhaps getting some other disease would be. Well, you know that too, of course. But um, but I think you would you would get coronavirus before you get anything else because you you know they could be protecting theirself. I don't think they're like just raw dogging, but you could get coronavirus by, you know, them kissing you or something like that. Now, now drone images have showed hundreds of swingers arriving at the sex festival. People, there was, a, there were, there must've been like a thousand drones flying, right. flying over this <laughs> festival, right? Can you right. imagine like drones are pop are like, are like banging into each right. other, right? Exactly. So what guess- Most of them are probably handled by 12 year old <laughs> young boys. Exactly. If I was a 12 year old out and I had a drone, I would be, I'd be flying over that festival. What? <laughs> One guest said the event hit it among the fields off of Highway A52 was heavily patrolled by security guards. He said there's a lack of loos, I guess, which is the bathrooms and washing mm -hmm. facilities. So that's not very promising for a swingers festival. Yeah. Dirty, smelly people for yeah. four days. And probably hot. Um, there's so. no social distancing. It's hot. It's sweaty. But he claims it's COVID safe because everyone got tested ahead of time. Oh. I wonder if they got tested for herpes, gonorrhea, HIV. I doubt it. Syphilis, I doubt those it. little buggies, whatever they're called. <laughs> what what are buggies the like? Little crabs, crabs. Yeah, I can't <laughs> remember what they're called. Crabs. Those are all the ones I know. I don't know of any other ones, but I'm sure there's others. Yeah. Meanwhile, an elderly male sex doll has been created by sex robot company Real Doll. There's not enough sex dolls in the world. They now got an old man sex doll. There's, I don't know. There's, there's, there's a sex. There's a sex doll for everybody. There's fetishes out all there. All right, people want old man sex. They well, now can, they, they that's old <laughs> man sex. The gray haired robot has been made at the request of a customer. The <laughs> customer wanted old man sex. It's a working male sex robot. The old man's called Henry. No, the no, company no. has been working, but Henry, Henry, Henry I, I'm going to tell you something. This no, is not a that's real. Not, that's not Henry. Yeah, Henry. Henry is the old man. No, and, Henry is the new, the young one. Uh, yeah, the, but they're giving the they're giving all of them. The they're name giving Henry? all the name Henry. They oh. all get Henry, and apparently, apparently, this is where you kind of lose the old man feeling. Apparently, Henry, the old man sex style, is getting a bionic penis, according to according to the real sex style company. Where's Vanessa? What we needed right. her for this? I, I, I just, <laughs> Why? I don't. Wait, I, I, I got to move on. Yeah. <laughs> I got to move on that one. I'm sorry, Joe. I can't continue that one. <laughs> That's just nasty. That's just bad. <laughs>
<laughs> like what? Can you call Vanessa, please, and get her on the right. phone? <laughs> right. Right. I, 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 can you please call her, please? <laughs> All right, a new study by Ashley Madison, the dating site that caters to cheaters, has revealed the top 20 sites, cities, mm -hmm. for loosening up your marital vows. All right, before looking, don't look. What are the top three cities? Las Vegas, Los Angeles, and Miami. Ooh, okay, I the say... One, the three biggest cheating cities. I, ooh, that's, that's, those are good. I know for sure. I didn't look. Be, I didn't either. Okay. For sure, I feel like Miami. I would almost say New York, just because it's so busy. I think people, uh, not in New York, not in my hometown, New York. In LA. People don't cheat in my hometown, New York. Oh, please. Come on, we're all, we're all. I say Miami. Okay, so, okay, well, we well, got they Miami. put the list up. Oh, you got Vegas. Good I knew job. it had to be Vegas. Where's the list on my list? Here? I see it right up here. Oh, okay. Miami, Orlando, Vegas, Atlanta, Cincinnati. Uh, oh, yeah. Miami, Orlando, and Las Vegas landed oh, on the top. LA is Boise, in there. Idaho, and Tucson, Arizona, Atlanta, and Oklahoma City. Atlanta, I could definitely I see I would have thought Los Angeles. Well, no, we're great. We love each other. We love love, and we stay together. We don't cheat in LA. Mm. Huh. Let's see what and other I statistics they have word. in here. Uh, the lack of sex with their partner was found to have a direct correlation with lowered affection levels. 65% of women said they are no longer attracted to their spouses, but 74%, even though they're not attracted, say they love them. Wow. So that's why there's a lot of cheating. Mm. They love them, so they can't leave them, but they ain't attracted to them. Oh, gosh. Maybe Maybe they got the dad belly at this point. See, that's why you gotta stay, right. stay, keep it, keep it up, right. y'all. Maybe, maybe they Don't look get like, comfortable. Maybe they look like Henry the old man sex doll. <laughs> well, he's for somebody. He's for somebody. <laughs> they interviewed a lot of females here. Forty-five percent of women said that extramarital sex is better because it allows them to experiment. Forty-two percent said it lets them have more frequent sex. And those older in age reported participating in extramarital affairs more than younger couples. Wow. This correlates so with Florida older. taking up 15% of the top 20 cities for infidelity. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.